Welcome to a special Papa's Perspective edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast presented by Bob's Discount Furniture. Get Bob's Discount at the official furniture store and mattress partner of the New York Giants. Stop in store or at mybobs.com. All right, the Giants are going to Indianapolis this week, and it's not a team that they play often, but I got a guy by my side who had a fun trip to Indianapolis back in 2002. Kerry Collins joins us here on the Papa's Perspective Giants Huddle Podcast. Kerry, how are you? Doing great, Bob. How are you? I'm doing great. So December the 22nd, 2002, the RCA Dome, uh, the Indianapolis Colts with Peyton Manning at quarterback, they came into the game at nine and five. You guys are eight and six. Uh, So this is an important game for you guys. Going into the game, did you think, hey, we're going to have to kind of go shot for shot with Manning and that Colts offense? You always do. Anytime you go into Indianapolis and, and when you were playing Peyton, I mean, you knew you were going to have to score points. I mean, they were going to do their thing. And, and uh, you know, we, we knew that, uh, you know, we, we were going to have to play well. and But we also had our defense. And I, we knew our defense was going to give them a hard time as well. So, uh, but but we knew that we were going to have to play well offensively if we were going to win. So, um, you know, you guys get on them early. Uh, Matt Bryan kicks a field goal. Tiki gets a touchdown. Vanderjack hits a field goal at the end of the first half. So it's 7-3. And then – you guys just started kicking their butt. Well, take me through that first play of the third quarter. First snap of the third quarter, Amani Toomer, 82-yard touchdown pass, and it was like, all right, we're here. Yeah, I, I forget what we called that play, but, you know, we probably ran three or four times when I was there, and it worked every time. And uh, I remember Jim at halftime was like, hey, we're going to – we're we're running it. You know, first play coming out coming out after halftime. I'm like, all right, great. You know, and, uh, man, he just couldn't draw it up – threw it up any better. I mean – um Amani did a great job selling it. Uh, Tiki did a good job, made a good throw to me, you know, back, which is always a little, you know, a little hairy, you know, with, with him throwing it back there. So, but uh, man, it just, Amani did a good job and got, got just far enough behind their, their secondary. And I was able to get him involved. And it was a huge play for us. You know, you and Amani, you know, even going back a couple of seasons earlier when you guys went to the Super Bowl, um, he was a guy that it seemed like, you and him just had a good chemistry on the field. And I know when your time with the Giants ended, he was really bummed out about it because he, you and him had that connection. How did that develop? I think through time, I think we learned to trust each other. You know, the thing about Imani that that was always great for me as a, as a quarterback was I knew that Imani was going to fight with everything he had to get the ball. And he was a big guy, had a big catch radius. And so – I knew that, that I could put the ball in a spot, and even though there might have been a guy hanging on Amani, he was going to fight with everything he had to get it. So uh, I started to learn to trust that and, and put it in spots that, uh, you know, I knew that, that it would be a contested catch, but you know, more times than not, he, he came up with it. And, um, you know, as we just started, you know, making some of those plays, we, we, we just started believing in each other. And uh, he was, uh, he, he was a kind, the kind of guy that, was just coming into his own, and and uh, you know I think really really appreciate the fact that that I could get him the ball. You guys hung a twenty spot on him in the third quarter. Uh, the Amani touchdown, Charles Stackhouse had a touchdown catch from you, um, and then Tiki had a one yard touchdown run. So you're kind of in this flow. Uh, at this point, the game is thirty to six. Now Peyton's Peyton, but he's not. He hasn't really become fully Peyton yet. Right, uh, as right. we saw later on, but did you feel like, Hey, look, the, the best plan here is pedal to the metal and just kind of keep it going. Oh, no question. And, um, you know, we got up on them and, you know, for what I remember that game is they, they kept trying to play a money man to man. And I think we beat them twice on touchdowns on the same route. And, uh, uh, but you know, going in there with a guy like Peyton and all the weapons they had, I mean, you know, your, your lead is never fully safe. So, um, you know, credit to, uh, to Jim and, and, and the rest of the offense, we just, we knew we had to keep scoring and, uh, you know, our defense being who they were, I mean, uh, we knew we had that going for us too. And, and obviously they, uh, you know, they, they did what they, they, they did that game and, and, and shut Peyton down really relatively speaking. Yeah. Monty wound up having two more touchdowns in the fourth quarter, the 21 yarder to make it 37 to 12. And then after Reggie Wayne's uh, long touchdown, you hit him for 27 yards to kind of put the game away. How satisfying was that? for you as a team to go in there against a team that, you know, everybody felt was going to be a playoff team. And I know you guys felt that you were a playoff team that year coming, especially coming off the disappointment of all one. Yeah, it was, uh, 
that was really kind of a critical time for us, I think, because, you know, we, we had kind of stubbed our toe a few times. We, you know, we were, you know, kind of battling 500 right there and, and uh, um, you know, to go in there and get that kind of win and really showed us what we could do going forward because, you know, by the end of 2002, I mean, we, we were rolling pretty good, you know, I mean, we were putting up some points and uh, I know the last game against the Eagles wasn't great, but man, we, we were, we, we were doing some good things offensively. And, uh, um, you know, that, that game gave us a lot of confidence going forward. Yeah. I mean, obviously the disappointment with, and we're not talking about the 49ers game. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> we don't play that. They're not gonna, they're not gonna talk about them. No, <laughs> they don't play the Niners uh, this year. So I don't have okay, to go. We right. wouldn't go back to it anyway. We'd probably go to back yeah, to yeah, something yeah. from 86 or 2011. There you go. There you but, go. There you go. But you guys are starting to build that whole confidence of we can be a dangerous team here. I remember I remember working the national radio broadcast on Westwood One the following week and going down to Tampa. And some of the people that I knew on the Bucks on the field beforehand said, Thank God your team didn't wind up showing up here because you guys were a matchup problem for them, weren't you? Well, I think so. And, uh, you know, one guy we hadn't mentioned yet is, is Jeremy Shockey. You know, and really, when you look at that Colts game, I mean, Shockey kind of set the tone that game. He had a big, big run in the, on a screen in the first first half that, you know, he ran over somebody, you know, and it, just his physical presence and, and what he brought from a, from a matchup standpoint uh, was, was a huge factor in that, in that first half and in that game too. So. Um, yeah, we, we, again, you know, we, we, we had it rolling and, uh, as evidenced by how we played when we went out to San Francisco, unfortunately, we ended up, uh, kind of on the wrong side of that deal. But, uh, um, you know, we would, we would have been, we would have been a headache for anybody going forward. Yeah. You mentioned Jeremy Shockey. Um, you know, we, we talked about tumor and the, and the three touchdown catches. Amani had 10 catches for 204 yards. And I guess almost forgotten in the fact that, you know, you targeted Jeremy Shockey eight times. He had seven catches for 116. How important was it to have that inside-outside threat in that game and during that season? Yeah, no question. I mean, what Shock brought to us was that that inside guy that had to be accounted for, and a guy who could make big plays. We were spreading them out a lot too. We were hitting them on one-on-one -on -one routes on the outside, but it really forced teams to play man-to-man -man with us against us and. uh when, when teams are playing man against us, I mean, that, that was advantage to us, the guys we had with, with Amani and Ike. And, you know, all of a sudden you got, you get Shockey in the mix or Tiki, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, you know, that, that became a huge advantage for us. So having that kind of guy that, 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 that garnered attention in the middle and had to be accounted for allowed, allowed us to open things up on the outside. I mean, you played a lot of games in the NFL. You had a lot of success first as a young player with Carolina and then your time with the giants. And then thereafter, uh, where the, uh, the other stops that you had. But, you know, when I look at your stat line from this Indianapolis game, 23 of 29, 366, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Is this one of those under the radar from the public standpoint games, but from a Kerry Collins standpoint, something that you remember a lot? Absolutely, without question. Um, you know, you mentioned those touchdowns to Imani. Um, you know, again, what – I always felt like if if you play if you play it played us man to man, you know, with the guys that we had, we were gonna we were gonna torch you. You know, we we had the ability to do that. And uh, you know, personally, yeah, I mean, you know, going into going into Indianapolis and, and putting up those kind of numbers and, and taking care of the football, um, you know, in in a in a game that we really needed. I mean, that was that was uh, you know, definitely one of the you know, one of the probably top five, seven games of my career. And the other thing that you did, and I'm guess this is part of your was your mindset, right? To get get off early in this game, which keeps the crowd noise, because the RCA dome a lot louder than the new building that they had, the the old building that they had. Um, is was that part of sort of the game plan? Is we got to start fast to keep the crowd out of this thing? Definitely, and and I I remember going into the game, and we talked about that. You know, Jim Jim said, "Hey, we got to jump on these guys. We can't let them get a lead." I mean that. That's how they were so successful for all those years. And again, they weren't they weren't quite what they were later on, but um, they certainly had the ability with 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 the guys they had to to jump on you and get a lead. And all of a sudden, now you're dealing with their pass rush, and you know you're dealing with the crowd and all that kind of thing. And uh, the 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 best thing we did that day was take it to them right from the start and 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 jump out and 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 get a lead. And uh, you know that allowed us to do what we did the rest of the game.
Yeah, the Giants don't go to Indianapolis often. They're going there this year, but back in 2002, Kerry Collins and the Giants put on a show in a 44-27 victory. Kerry, thank you so much for sharing this with us today and, and, and talking about it. You got it, Bob. Good to talk to you, man. Thanks for joining us for this special Papa's Perspective edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast presented by Bob's Discount Furniture. Bob's is back. Major style and savings on furniture, mattresses, decor, and more for your home, shop in store, or online at mybobs.com. Bob's Discount Furniture, the official furniture store and mattress partner of the New York Giants. 